social media today and if you read the name of this video you will see it is elected kings and appointed emperors Trinidad Tobago is in a bad way today we are in a bad way today because of the laziness of the people the incompetence of public servants and the zealous corruption racial division of the political class manipulated by the contract mafia to their own benefit that means the entire country is turned upside down over anguish caused by greed. Following is a statement of the judiciary of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago issued under the authority of the Honorable Mr. Justice Peter Jamada, an acting Chief Justice. On the afternoon of Friday the 1st of March 2019, in broad daylight in the presence of members of the public, an incident occurred on the front steps of the Hall of Justice, Knox Street, Knox Street Port of Spain. A small group of costumed individuals gathered there bearing placards critical of the Chief Justice, the Judicial and Legal Service Commission, and of the Administration of Justice. On the 2nd of March, the Saturday Express newspaper reported on the event under the headline, Old Mass Comes to the Hall of Justice, and introduced its report as follows. Masqueraders bearing placards with unprintable statements directed at Chief Justice Ivor Archie drew the attention of spectators outside the Hall of Justice in the Port of Spain yesterday. Investigations revealed that at the time there was an ongoing carnival parade in Port of Spain put on by the NCC and themed as the traditional carnival characters festival 
and was and that ostensibly this group was depicting old mass. Investigations have also revealed that photographs of the group on the steps of the Hall of Justice, together with comments, have been circulating widely on social media, both within and outside of Trinidad Tobago, and that the incident has also been reported on in the local mainstream media. There is no doubt that both under the Constitution and the common law there exists the right to freedom of thought and expression, the right to hold and express political views, and the entitlement to be robustly critical of the administration of justice, including judicial officers. In this latter regard, the Privy Council has pointed out as long ago as 1936, Ambad versus the Attorney General of Trinidad and Tobago, justice is not a cloistered virtue. She must be allowed to suffer the scrutiny and respectful even though outspoken comments of ordinary men. And yet, even as the right to freedom of expression is the primary right and one with, without which an effective rule of law is not possible, it is not an absolute right. Lord Stern, XP Sims 2002, 115-125. Carnival in Trinidad Tobago has always empowered permissive social commentary and critique. Stick a pin right there in that paragraph and tell me if you say that you have law but you want to say that you vary law because of carnival, what then is that? What is that gray area? Tell me what that gray area is because I want to return to that gray area and cite it in any other matter. I want to cite that gray area of commentary in any other matter that arises, especially the new penchant of a handful of highly paid government lawyers to sue for defamation anybody who points out wrongdoing from the government side or their financiers or contractors and the latest cry that everything is sedition. We need to know what is that gray area. I wanna say it again. Because this is from the Chief Justice himself, well, the acting Chief Justice. Carnival and Trinidad Tobago has always empowered permissive social commentary and critique. So, 365 days of the year, now we can play a mass. For significant historical, sociological, anthropological, and cultural reasons, this is encouraged as a unique feature of the democratic way of life that has evolved in TNT again. I want to read that for you again. I want to read it for a judge. I want them to hear that this is Trinidad and Tobago. So if we can't fight it from the one side, we'll fight it from the next. For significant historical, sociological, anthropological, and cultural reasons, this is encouraged as a unique feature of the democratic way of life in, of TNT that has evolved in Trinidad and Tobago. I want to make a note of that. Indeed, Carnival continues to facilitate important public participation in and discourse on the nation's affairs, participation which is countenanced in the preamble to the Constitution. Notable in this regard are the art forms of Calypso, Old Mass, and Peacock. I want Mr. Michael Quamina to pay attention to this release by the Chief Justice. However, as with so many things, there are boundaries, boundaries that may be legitimately stretched, but that also not to be crossed. Lord Steen has pointed out in the 1999 Privy Council decision is Ahi versus DPP of Mauritius, there is a tension between freedom of expression and the offense of scandalizing the court. This boundary exists at the line between outspoken but respectful criticism and between the primacy yet not absolute nature of the right to free speech. Free speech, now I have opened on my computer screen the Constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. I want to find where in the Constitution it says that the judiciary is a fiefdom outside of the organization and the ownership of the people of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago and not its servants. Free speech must therefore at times yield to other cogent social and public interests. It's funny how that those, those other cogent social and public interests only arise when it needs to serve the purposes of those who would rather not face scrutiny. Thus, whereas criticism of the judiciary and of judicial officers is permissible, any such comment ought to be fair, reasonable, and proportionate and ought to show appropriate respect for the administration of justice and judicial officers in the discharge of their duties. It is in these circumstances that the JRTT urges temperance in the public criticism levels against the 
Judicial and Legal Service Commission, the Chief Justice and the Administration of Justice. Unwanted crass and demeaning criticisms are not likely to be justifiable in either the social or the public interest and may more likely undermine them both. Now, I don't understand why they think that they are above scrutiny. I want to tell them what they are above. They are above bringing their lives and the offices they hold into odium and disrespect. They are supposed to be, what it was, like, like um, Caesar's wife, un unimpeachable. They're supposed to be not open to scandal and bacchanal. Their lives, their lives are not supposed to be. There was a comment put out today by none other than Pundit Satayanan Maharaj, spiritual head of the Sataya Anan Ashram, Temple of Peace and Bliss, Aranguez. This is his response. So let us see if this is balanced. No sacred cows at carnival, judiciary fast and out of place. It is ironic that the judiciary could find institutional voice to intimidate and harass citizens who exercise their rights to freedom of expression by having an old mass portrayal on the steps of the Hall of Justice to articulate the concerns of the layman about the sad state of the administration of justice. The deafening silence of the judiciary on the embarrassing, scandalous, and outrageous allegations regarding conduct of the Chief Justice has undermined public confidence in the judiciary and this convenient self-serving statement is likely to do more harm than good. Up to this point, I am in complete agreement. The traditions of old mass as part of our carnival culture is an integral aspect of our democratic way of life and any attempt to suppress the public's right to freedom of expression must be met with strong protest and condemnation. Again, I agree. Acting Chief Justice Jamada is fast and out of place, if not arrogant and dictatorial, to issue such a warning. His plea that the criticism of judicial officials should have respect for the administration of justice and judicial offices in the discharge of their duties will fall on their affairs. The, judici the judiciary cannot command and demand respect if their behavior has not earned and does not deserve such respect. As far as I could see, the alleged criticisms on the placard of the demonstrators had nothing to do with any case, but rather extrajudicial conduct and the CJ's extracurricular activities. The statement shows how completely disconnected the judiciary is from the prevailing sentiment and feeling of the people that it seeks to administer justice to. If the judiciary continues to bury its head in the sand only to take it out to seek their own interests instead of serving the public interest, it will continue to be a laughing stock on the subject of public ridicule. Doesn't that also remind you of the Media Association of Trinidad and Tobago? Let's take a pin in that little tiny tiger. The time would have been much better spent answering the burning questions on people's minds which have now grown stronger in light of Mark Bassan's investigative article querying the circumstances of the death of former Chief of Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard Richard Edwards, who was identified Dylan Johnson as being part of the conspiracy to murder him. Apparently, the judiciary is not concerned about such matters. While Jamada enjoys his acting as Chief Justice, perhaps he can answer the following questions. What was the nature of the relationship between Chief Justice Archie and Dylan Johnson? Is it concerned that Mr. Johnson was shot and forced to flee to the United Kingdom because he feared for his life after he made public allegations about the nature of his relationship with the Chief Justice? Given that the matter is the subject of a criminal police investigation, should the Chief Justice be allowed to continue in office while the investigation is ongoing? While it was right for the CJ to request HDC homes for his friends while... O no, sorry. Was it right for the Chief Justice to request HDC homes for his friends while ordinary citizens have been patiently waiting in the queue for over 10 years? Have or can other judges exercise this privilege? There are no sacred cows that are above criticism and ridicule during Carnival, and the judiciary is no exception. When the UNC was in power, the ridicule of former Prime Ministers Bastille Pandey and Kamala Prasad Bises in old mass presentations is legendary, and there was no concern about the need for respect for the officers then. It should be remembered that in the USA, judges face public scrutiny via parliament before they can be appointed. The PNM is in power now and the judiciary is wrong to step out of its crease and advise restraint on legitimate artistic expressions that are an entrenched feature of old mass and carnival. The door is, however, now open for a wider public debate about the damaging silence of a judiciary which conveniently awakes from its slumber when the people mash their judicial corn. Now, I'll tell you something, eh? I agree. 
I absolutely agree with Pundit Satyanan Maharaj. And I think we, the people of Trinidad Tobago, we are at the point where we have to understand that an undo and a redo of the entire system of justice in Trinidad Tobago is warranted. You can't do that without absolute political power, so we need to get to the point where we put aside the nonsense of racist voting and, this, and vote a government into office comprehensively. All 41 seats. You have to trust somebody that they will come along and undo and redo everything that will take us back to the constitution of the republic and reboot it. We need to reboot the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Nothing works. Nothing works, including the judiciary. Now, they may not want you to say that, but it doesn't change the fact because a rose by any other name would still be as sweet. Trinidad and Tobago is at a crossroads right now. We are at a crossroads. I honestly believe. If you vote back PNM or UNC into office in the next election, that term will be marred by either declaration of martial law or open violence. I cannot comprehend. Right now, we have people fuming on tender hooks. I think the only thing that is restraining Trinidad and Tobago is the fact that an election is somewhere in the near future. And today, today we get an announcement that the Prime Minister, who after his Minister Communi of Communication, lauded public health in Trinidad, because among the best in the world, Minister of Health, says that they have no problems, then why is Keith Rowley heading to the United States for medical tests? I have said repeatedly in the past, I say so again, that should be against the law. It should come with the office that all your public health, unless the Chief Medical Officer can say, with certainty that whatever your case is cannot be handled in Trinidad and Tobago. But every time a government minister flies out of Trinidad and Tobago, it flies in the face of everything that they say to defend public health in Trinidad and Tobago. And I say again, it should be law that the prime minister and all government ministers, in fact, all members of parliament who sit in parliament because these people have the power to change things, all of them, they and their families should have to go into public health. Not even St. Clair and West Shore and St. Joseph, Port of Spain, San Fernando, Mount Hope. That is what they should have to face. And they should face it through the casualty door like everybody else. Because if you want to clear up that logjam, send people to sit in that logjam who can deal with it. Blue lights should be against the law. Half these people who move in through traffic not moving through traffic for safety. Nobody don't give a shit about half of them. Nobody don't give a shit about most of them. None of them are in danger. They use blue lights to evade traffic as a trapping and a perk of office. We need to make that illegal. The people who can fix the country, the people who have the responsibility and the authority to end traffic, they should be the ones most in traffic so that they have an understanding of what needs to be fixed. Let them convene cabinet and the minister of works get buffed by every other minister, including the prime minister. You know why we made traffic? Fix the shit. Fix the shit. And any minister of works can recant. Partner, I went in the hospital for an ingrown toenail and wait 19 hours, so you fix your shit too. If we can get to there, all of the shit will fix. But for the shit to fix, we have to stop being assholes. We have to stop being jackasses. We have to stop defying shithounds. We have to stop defending and excusing wrongdoing. We have to raise our standards as high as we can. We have to demand better. We have to know what better looks like. Birds born in a cage think flying is an illness. That properly depicts a lot of the people. I can't say all of the people because people are waking up. I love Saknayan, the pundit's um, response. And I'm seeing more and more people are putting out, people are standing up for country and speaking truth to power. People keep sending me stuff. There's a pepper, there's a pepper. How does someone like you so? Somebody said in, in the cabinet, uh, there was a, a statement made that everybody sounded like Philip Alexander now. Get Vex, get damn Vex. It is time for all of us to tell all of them, miss us with your bullshit. 
if you are in charge of the government and the government is in charge of public health four years now if you spent 20 billion dollars on public health in Trinidad and Tobago and you don't trust it if you spent 20,000 million of our dollars on public health and you don't trust it partner all are we in trouble you should be fired today you should be fired today. They should fire Keith Rowley today. He is a stunting jackass on stilts. He is too tall to be that stupid. Keith Rowley is a jackass of class. He leads behind him. Because he's a guy that is afraid of intelligent people, he leads a, band, a battalion of assholes. Listen to them. Listen to them. Faris al Rawi scared to death of a real conversation. He could sit down on TV and read his, his and rehash his rehearsed nonsense to bamboozle him around Kisun and Fazir Muhammad. But if Faris Arawi ever debates, and I, if you check, go back, go back up to 2013. Every time Faris spoke, he threw in the words ad hominem, ad hominem, until I start calling him Captain Ad hominem. I wrote an article, I was publishing the papers. Faris, here are 50 other Latin phrases that you can learn as well. And he didn't think that the people were looking on and seeing him for the copy and paste jackass that he was. You see, anybody could learn. Anybody could read something, learn it by rote and read it back to you. But to speak intelligently on all manner of issues, that's where he gets stumped. Stuart Young is a multiple minister right now. And I am telling you, I would gladly debate Stuart Young on all of his ministries. And you will see how way out of his depth that all hat no cowboy really is. This is your government. That is what you're settling for. And until you demand better, raise your standards and say, hey, you know, if you've spent $20,000 million on public health and it's not good enough for you, why do you still have the job? Ask yourself that question. Why would you, why would you tolerate a prime minister who's minister of health appointment? Both of them have failed so miserably and do nothing about it. How? Why? What is broken in us? That, that is good enough. What is broken in us? That that is acceptable. What is broken in us? That we allow blue lights to park traffic as law and not demand that that law be changed. So that blue lights cannot be used to evade normal traffic by people who are responsible for the very traffic. It is why I say, the member of parliament, this bullshit about if you have an office or a mailbox in a constituency, you can run as the member of parliament. That's nonsense. You must have as your primary residence, you, your wife, your children, your mother, your father, whoever you're living with, your primary residence must be within that constituency. Six out of the seven days of the week, that's where you must sleep and wake up. Because that is the only way you will know when water come and water go, if mosquito biting, crime happening, if traffic in the morning, traffic in the evening, the only way that you will know is if you are enduring it too. That's the only way you will know. And that's the only way the people will get reprieved because you've been elected to office to do one thing. One thing only. Go to the parliament with the 40 others that look and sound like you and say, hey, this is the problem. These are the problems that my, constituencies are, my constituents are having and we would like them addressed. Post haste. And the other 40 will also have theirs to raise. And all of a sudden, the parliament will be full of people bringing to government people who, can, who are supposed to functionally address these issues. Address them because the parliament will make noise. The parliament will say, Mr. Speaker, this is unacceptable. This is unacceptable. But we're not going to get there. If Stephen Hades could live in fairways, represent Shagwana's West, come on Hema Ramkisun show as the MP for Shagwana's East, sorry, Shagwana's East, and speak of Colm Imbut as his member of parliament. That don't work. That's bullshit. Right now, Barry Panarat don't live where he is the member of parliament for Glenn Ramadan Singh didn't either. And that needs the fix. That needs the fix, like a lot of other things. But everything that we touch on and everything that we tell you that can fix, can be fixed now what you need to do is elect an office a government that has an interest in fixing it that is what you're supposed to hire people who are not only functionally capable but driven to do the job like gary griffith this evening when i sent him a text that was sent to me about what was going on outside the savannah by cipriani boulevard where people were catching the tail to drive in and drive out gary said i'm on it i'm heading down there now 
Has the commissioner of police? This Friday gone here, I had cause to publish that I vehemently disagreed with him over Bayshore. And I-95 and 102 called to interview me and I told them that Shagaramas should be maintained in pristine condition as a nature park for all the people of Chantabago. There should be no development. And the Progressive Empowerment Party promises you to see all those stunting one percenters in court. But we will declare it a nature park. We will declare it for all the rest of our eternity that, that Parliament can make no law. We will break down every single structure that is not a historical structure and return it to nature. The only thing that you will be allowed to build in Shagaramas are memories. The only thing that you can leave are footprints. We need to start respecting this country and we, and most importantly, we need to respect the future generations. Others protected it for us to meet it. We can't destroy it, others to come. But we have among us a growing band of the most deviant, disgusting, nasty stink. What these people do, you see, the reason Hema jump out herself and media association, they know what is, <laughs> they know that I know what a lot of the people in public office do. They know that I am very aware, so that when I get angry, the chances are that I might speak it. I tell Chanel Tabego, eh? Philip Edward Alexander, with parliamentary privilege, is he hear that statement? When he touched down, the whole place shell down. That is what will happen. There will be a mad scramble and a bolt for that airport. Give me the authority to get your money back. Give me the authority to get your money back. And those of you who go to church and have to leave the first five pews behind because they have a certain bunch of people that think that those pews are there, put Philip Edward Alexander in the parliament and all of a sudden them pews vacant because they're looking to get out of Dodge. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because there are a lot of them who sit in the front pew of the temple, the mosque, and the church who are absolute criminals, who are responsible for all the wrong that is done in Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, they don't go wrong on the ground and pull the triggers. They don't go and rob people. Like that Coffee Street robbery I watched today, them two fellas who put down that robbery are so trained. I watched that video about 10 times to see exactly how they did what they did. Them fellas practice that. Those fellas practice that robbery. Like they hunt, they hunted like something you watch on Discovery Channel. They hunt that man. That man was running from the first fella and the fella just kicked his foot out from under him. He just kicked his foot while he ran into the man, fall down on the ground, cat spraddle. The first man who was running behind him, all he trying to do is take shit out his pockets. And while that man fighting him, a man run straight across the road and hit him two boots in his head like he kicked a football and knocked him out cold. I sure, I don't know if that man is alive tonight. And the two of them run off with their proceeds, whatever they get from this young man. And all of the 1% contract mafia that responsible for the criminal condition of this country, they robbed that man today. They kicked him in his head. The poison fruit don't fall far from the poison tree. We have a problem in Trinidad and Tobago, and until you are ready to face it by your vote, it can't fix. You can't fix it. They won't fix it. It is only the Progressive Empowerment Party, a, a political vehicle created to bring truth, justice, and equality to Trinidad and Tobago. There's only one man. There's only me. They know. They're scared to death of me. They're absolutely frightened to the core of me. They hate the fact that I can speak to you. They want to shut social media down. People knew the entire cybercrime bill was created to turn Philip Edward Alexander off. They don't care about the rest of them making live video, driving all over the place, talking a crocus bag of ass. At the end of the day, anybody can rant and bark. Stray dogs all through the country just do it all the freaking time. Bark, 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 bark. But if you stop, where they going? What are they doing? We have a real chance. We have not only brought to you truth that most of those barking dogs listen and then come back and say the same friggin' thing. I hear a man saying, I should want people to copy me. No, partner. I don't want people to copy me. I want you to wake up and think for yourself and I want you to come and help us. We have to rescue this country. It's not about me and it's not about my pride or my personality or my ego. It is about a better trend to make, but we can't do it alone. Can't do it alone. 
But you have to know. You have to be aware by now that from the top to the bottom, everybody trying to make us aware. There's a man named Philip Edward Alexander who clearly understands how the country should be run. And he also understands the banditry and what is taking place. So that when we speak and we talk to you about issues and solutions, you understand, you hear, and you get it. That it could fix. And there is somebody who can. So what is the next step? Do you get beyond whatever trap they set in your mind to fool you? Do you get beyond it? Can you put aside your race, your hair texture, your, your institutional bias? Can you look at your role as voter, as hiring somebody to do the job? Because that's all I am doing. I am applying for the job to lock all of these sons of bitches up. That's what I want. I want to empty the chamber of commerce. I want them to hear me. I want them to hear me. I want Kiss Baking Company to hear me coming. Put me in office, Kiss Baking Company will pay a fine for every single one of those vendors that they have illegally vending on the side of the road, for every single location, for every single day, and we'll estimate it as 10 years per location. The fine is $1,000 a day. We will bankrupt your ass to prove a point. Trinidad and Tobago needs to understand that if water in the tap scarce and you can't bathe your child and you can't wash your car, Blue Waters have to have problems too. Carib and Stag have to have problems too. SM Jalil and Nestle have to have problems too. Oh, this is not a real country. And if it is not a real country and we accept that, then let us call a spade a spade. Let us say that we are insipid. We are beyond you that we don't understand our responsibility as citizens and that we will continue to allow Guti to, to we are allowing a contract for Guti to run. And who is the Guti in this crime? We and it's hunting season. Trinidad Tobago needs to wake itself up. Look at your brother, look at your sister. Look north, south, east, west. Look left, look right. Check and see who's suffering too. All you're, all you're cussing one another for race. You dragging, he collapsing. Neither all you have two coppers, two pennies to hang on a mop. But all you're cussing one another. And those who really committed all the wrongdoing in Trinidad and Tobago living high up on the hill, laughing at all you. Clinking crystal glass. Pull up in Porsche Cayenne. Hey! To laugh at you. People who don't look like you. But you're talking we time now. You're talking we time now. There is only one organization, the Progressive Empowerment Party. And I'm telling you that while I am responsible for a lot that, that I have said, I could not have gotten here without the Orange Army, the people who have stood up and assembled themselves like a new Justice League of Trinidad and Tobago. Look around me. Look at the organization that has built itself up and is ready and waiting to take its place as a real and functional government. Trinidad and Tobago can be cured, it can be fixed, we can return it to blessed paradise. But you have to want to and we're not going to get there bullshitting one another, lying to ourselves and lying to our children. And this, this that we vote for, somehow it could make sense. That if the only reason you happy Keith Rowley is in office is because he keeping Kamala out and the two of them full of equals amounts of shit, then you're an ass. And there's nothing anybody could do to help you. Because you need to wake up to the fact that your vote must not be used to keep you enslaved. Your vote is not the keys to your shackles if you keep voting massa in. Toussaint Louverture. Toussaint Louverture is the man that history don't want to face. Toussaint Louverture is the man that history don't want to give his rightful dues. They want to give the, the, the abolition of slavery to everybody else. But it is Toussaint Louverture who lived and died as an icon, a symbol of freedom. A man who said it is more of us than them. And I'd rather die on my legs than live on my back. And it is that we need to get to. People who are willing to stand in defense of their country. Democracy requires you to do it. Democracy requires you to stand up. No, Ian D'Souza, we don't really need a detox, you know, we just need to wake up. We have to wake up that if Keith Rowley says that he could spend $20,000 million of your money, that he take out your child lunch money, that he take out your, your wife clothing allowance, that he take out of your ability to own a home because they're taxing you mercilessly. So they take those taxes from you and spend $20,000 billion on public health and give you that shit that he knows is so much shit that he ain't gonna go near to the 10-foot pole. What is you really telling yourself? And that's what you have to ask yourself. 
That's what you have to ask yourself. First, I get anywhere. We had a wake up. Share this video a hundred times tonight. Find every group, every page that you could have shared it in. Tell them, listen. I play three calypsos for you at the start. Listen to this one. I visited by the chamber. Witness an orchestra. A bang, bang, bang. A holy partition. Great their performance in style. Talent and the pure. if you don't buy it. They can't win if you don't buy it. If you don't buy into the nonsense that the only choices are Kamala and Keto, PNM and UNC. If you don't change that, if you don't shift gears, if you don't undo and redo your own approach to Trinidad and Tobago, we can't go nowhere. They will win. They will continue to win. And these jackasses, these are the small jackasses, you know. These are the pimples and the postures and the boils. These are the, these, these are the ones that we see as the symptoms, but the real cancer is the contract mafia. There are some people in this country, some lawyers, some accounting firms, some zealous business people who are dedicated to theft. They will call it anything and they have judges and lawyers and, and politicians willing to work magic to help sanitize the banditry that is the operation in this country. But they committed to a course of action. They sit in places that you dare not go. You cannot enter. Places like the Clydesdale Club and the, and, and was the one in Port of Spain? Union Club and, and, and the Lodge. In places in where the backroom boys meet and light cigars and drink very expensive drinks and plot your demise, your undoing. I still cannot believe that I live in a country where the National Insurance Board takes $8.25 from poor people and have no problem lending 41, giving 41 million dollars to Tamnak Tayan of Sarah to build a discotheque club Siam for the one percent to go on boogie. They are, these people are disgusting. They will do anything. They don't care about you. They don't care about you. They don't care anything about you. Keith Rowley doesn't care about you. Camille Robinson Regis doesn't care about you. Colin Lindbergh has nothing but contempt for you. Franklin can. The reason he looks like a smiling jackass is he laughs at you from the moment he wakes up till he goes to sleep at night. They were performing open heart surgery on Franklin can. They couldn't get that smile off his face. Laughing at you. I want to fly, change, fly up to this church. Since they get rid of the past, let the past be the past. You and see brand new, they're going to tell you. This is since they humble down ramish, the party have no more rubbish. But when I look around, what do I see? Recycled politicians, I see kangaroos like a salmon of Logan, hopping from bandwagon to wagon. So the polish and shine. Then fall back in line, but that cannot teach my mind. Jump high, jump low, when the sun or rain. I am falling for that again. It's the same faces, new administration. Same faces, now in new positions. Same faces, with a brand new team. You and see the same bunch of stepping teams. If you ordered the 
Agricultural Development Bank of Trinidad and Tobago. There are people in this country holding Shaconia Medal and Trinity Cross that will make a jail. Hear that again. There are people in this country holding Shaconia Medal and Trinity Cross that will make a jail. Or the Agricultural Development Bank, under the PNM and the UNC, the Ministry of Land, EMBD, and all these different dispensations and versions of itself. The ADB under the PNM was used to get loans to buy land in bulk and never pay the loan. Never pay the loan so that at all the time they write off the loan. Plenty people. The <laughs> As have to behave. Eh? You see, every time I talk, I lose friends that I went to school with, that I grew up with. People that, you know, not, not the children not bad, the grandchildren not bad, but they're evil. But if I call them out and I put their business in the road and the children had a vex with me and the grandchildren had a vex with me, and I had to take that in stride. But I want to promise you, and Tobago, one thing. Eh? I want to promise you, you will get a rogues gallery. You will know, not this little... Pour me one two by four. Abu Bakr was a functional tool of other people who wanted a job done. It is not them, I mean them, you know, who commit murder, who commit real serious crimes, have to pay for it. But the people that you really have to go for is the puppet masters. I don't care really about the spranger and the, and the coke seller, you know. I want the distributor and the importer. I want them. And to people who think that them alone could war, we will see. We will see who have more belly and who bring more to the table. We want that. We want to war with those who've warred with this country for so long. Give us political power. Put us in government and we will purge for you. Those who have stolen your money, we will bring them to justice. Their children and their grandchildren will find out where the money comes to pay for the life that they live. Because there's been trotters and prime asking, what's wrong with this Philip? Bella boy, why are you talking about nanny and granny so? Because they don't know. They don't know. You don't know. There are questions if I ask tonight on this live video, we'll have lawyers tripping over themselves tomorrow, but it will cause you in my short circuit your mind. Because Chilean Tobago is not ready to face the reality of where all our money went. Lawrence Dupre knew what he was doing. They were looting Clico. They were looting it. Gita Sakal, who was the corporate secretary, wrote herself a check for $25 million and put it in a drawer. They were looting the company. And when it was looted and it fell and it collapsed, it fell on you. Because the PNM and the UNC who were bribed and paid off both sides, big money, big money, they voted together to rescue Clico, ostensibly to save you. But it would have been cheaper in this economy to have paid off all of the loan holders and let Clico fall. It would have been better if you had sold off all of the assets and paid off all of the people who were exposed. But they couldn't do that because there were criminals, white collar criminals in this country, front of the church pew sitters who had accounts in Clico and CL Financial that on paper said millions of dollars that in reality did not exist. And they too got covered. They too got to withdraw money that was a ghost. AV oil isn't the first of them. And that's why Rowley is justified in being outraged because it's a long line of criminals that have been servicing the people of Sri Lanka today. Not just AV oil. The Law Association of Trian Tobago is not quite certain on which side of right and wrong they fall. So they just think in terms of winning and losing. And while that might be okay for them and their bottom line, it's not good for Trinidad and Tobago because we want a just and equitable country. The average person is walking around thinking that if it wasn't, if it wasn't raw, right, somebody would have dealt with it. But it's not happening because the people who are in positions of authority to right the unfit, unforgivable wrongs, they are the ones benefiting from it as well. So what do you do? 
What do you do? If you love your country and you want to raise your family and grow old here, what do you do? Do you bury your head in the sand and hope that at some point you could get by on a blind? The people who were working in TST and Petrochen, they just woke up and found out that they can't. To the person who sent me this today, I mean, I was in a live video this morning to Wasser, to the Minister of Public Utilities, to say, I have a suggestion for you. It is out of left field and it may be difficult, but hear me, it sounds like magic, but I think it could work. The rain that is falling from the sky, let's catch it. Let's catch it and hold it. Let's treat it and distribute it and see if that can solve the problem. To the Media Association of Trinidad and Tobago, somebody sent me this today. My favorite tutor at university had a great journalism 101 lesson. If someone says it's raining and another person says it's dry, it's not your job to quote them both. Your job is to look out of the fucking window and find out which is true. And I agree. India just overtook China to become the world's fastest growing major economy. I've been telling you that for 10 years. We've been talking that for 10 years, that India is breathing down China's neck. And I said today, it's called a managed economy, deliberately harnessing the natural advantages to the predispositions of the population to align with global trends. In the, cases, in the case of India, that was information technology for which they now dominate the entire world. Not too shabby for a former ghetto on a call center. When will we here get that government without vision leads to destruction? That capitalism without compassion is a prescription for confusion? That tribalism and corruption won't stop at any point unless we agree to stop it? The PEP proposes a massive diversification to agriculture, tourism, shipping, and manufacture as a start while creating gestations for our own foreign to the digital age. Today is late, but better late than never. Somebody sent this to me today. Now, I can't write, I can't share everything that is sent to me, but I share as much as I could. And this one is going viral, surprisingly, for Carnival Sunday. Hello, I'm a Trinbagonian living in New York. In 2009, my grandmother collapsed in her home in Freeport. She lived with her nephew who lived in the back house. My grandmother at the time was 70. She never wanted to move to New York with her seven children. She always said home is home. She collapsed in her home from a diabetic shock. Her nephew found her and called the ambulance that took 45 minutes to arrive. She was taken to San Fernando General Hospital where it was discovered she had a severe urinary tract infect infection. As soon as we heard, we flew down the following day. When we arrived, her hands and feet were tied to the bed. When asked the nurses why that was done, they said she got up too much and wanted to use the bathroom. The infection had gotten so bad, she started to become delusional. She was not given anti antibiotics. My cousin, who is a doctor in New York, and my mother, as well as my aunts, who are all registered nurses, brought antibiotics with them when they heard it was a urinary tract infection. She was not given IV fluids or antibiotics. The doctor looking over her was in his 20s. She was approaching her deathbed due to something that could be solved so easily. They were feeding her food that elevated her blood sugar. When we arrived at the hospital two days after she was warded, her blood sugar was over 300. She was retaining fluid and was not given her water pill which drained the excess fluid. When the doctor saw us treating her, he said along with the nurse, all the American come here to play big thing. My family started to give her antibiotics and fluids. A few days later, she regained a better mindset. Her urine, her urine started to return to a normal color. Another thing is when we arrived at the hospital, she was laying down in her urine and feces for two days and they did not clean her. We knew that Eric Williams' medical complex was better, so we tried to take her out. They refused to give us a wheelchair and started cursing at us, including our doctor. They said she is not sane enough to leave. So we asked my grandmother to name everyone her own, and she did, and started with the relations. Mind you, this was a few days after the antibiotics started to work. They refused to give us a wheelchair, so we lifted her up and took her to the car. The nurse started to call my brother names. We drove to Mount Hope, and they did further testing and said she needed a new kidney, and the doctor said to go to the private hospital where he worked. We knew that it was inaccurate because my cousin, the doctor, looked over the test results results and kidneys work in pairs. One kidney was at 50 and the other at 40. When added together, it's perfectly fine. It's 90% 90, 90 functionality. We took her home and treated her for another week. She was able to walk and operate closer to normal. We decided to fly her to, to New York where we carried her to the hospital and she stayed a few days on the continuation of heavy antibiotics and no kidney transplant was needed. The doctor in New York looked shocked when we told him that the Doctors in Trinidad were saying about a new kidney. My grandmother passed away a few years later from a heart attack and still had the remainder of her, still had the reminder on her wrist of what was done to her at San Fernando Hospital, the scars from being tied to the bed.
the Progressive Empowerment Party was formed because we were initially going to be an activist group that was going to sue the Ministry of Health over public health. That is why Harry, Hunt, Ian Griffith and myself got together. What became the Progressive Empowerment Party was when we realized that that was not enough that we had to actually challenge for government. We had to wake the people up. We set as our goals, as our initial intention to inform, educate, and empower the people, to give them knowledge, information, and then we had to give them choice. We've done that. We've done that. We are waking people up in droves. People are talking one to the other and telling them we have options. Trinidad and Tobago does not have to be this way. There is not one issue that you could name, one ailment that you could raise that plagues this country that cannot be fixed. So I ask you, why are we putting up with it? Why do we continue to believe that race politics is somehow going to rescue us from what race politics has done to us? How long before we make not everything is wrong in Trinidad and Tobago. And I said to him, yeah, Liz was right. Liz was right. You tell me what's good. What's working? I'll stop talking tonight. You tell me what's good about Trinidad and Tobago that the government is responsible for. And this will be the last time I speak publicly. As the last time he spoke on my thread. <laughs> said carnival walking. David Rudder called the Dimash Grand, not the Dimash Grand, the Panorama Finals yesterday, a piece of shit. David Rudder. David Rudder said for the first time in his life, he couldn't get to see Desperados because of how badly operated that was. The night before, the kings and the queens, there were no lights. There were no lights, believe it or not. There were no lights so that you watch the kings and queens in the dark. Today, the traffic and the parking is an absolute mess and nobody knows who had the plan or what the plan was. To get in to see the panorama, it was either $850 or $200. And both of them in the same line. 
no VIP parking, nothing. And everybody complaining because there was nothing looking like anybody organized this. The man in charge of the entire carnival, Winston Gypsy Peters, make himself a contestant in the Calypso competition. Well, they hear freaking necromancy. This country man, the principal means of destruction are all forms of public entertainment. Robert Amar asked me today, 50 years we're doing this carnival, we still can't get it right. The principal means of distraction are all forms of public entertainment, drugs and alcohol and social activities. But such distractions have a drug-like effect. They wear off. We crave new ones, faster ones, to lift us out of ourselves and divert us from the harsh realities of life and creeping boredom. An entire civilization, ancient Rome, practi practically collapsed under the weight of this new need and emotion. In Rome, it was called bread and circuses. Their economy became tied to the creation of novel, novel luxuries and entertainments that sapped its citizen spirit. Few were willing anymore to sacrifice their pleasures for hard work or for the public good. Sounds like modern day Sodom and Gomorrah, Trinidad and Tobago. said I am arrogant lack common sense and have no leadership skills I said to him friend I'll accept the arrogant I take it that it comes across that way I am the only person in Trinidad fighting the powerful the one percent and the contract mafia and exposing the wrongdoing at that level and I have to do it under the most unethical and reprehensible media blackout so I have to make a big noise so I understand that it will come across as arrogant but, but lack common sense. If it's one thing, even my detractors admit, there are few people that possess the depth and breadth of my political and institutional knowledge, and I put it on display every single day. So I don't think that you're correct. And the lack of leadership skills, I don't know if you're correct about that either, because in two years, we've built the fastest growing political party in this country's history, despite getting no media. So I don't mind if you dislike me, but dislike me for the right reasons. Don't make shit up. We, the Progressive Empowerment Party, we, this is not shits and giggles. This is not a populist movement. This is not about you liking us or even liking yourself. This is about you liking your country. This is about us wanting a better trying to make for ourselves. Selfish reasons. For ourselves, our families. For us to grow old in. I want to know that our public health could never do to a citizen of this country what it did to that lady. That 70 year old woman. I want to make sure that the nurse and the doctors and the, you see if this was a progressive empowerment party government, the regional health authority, whoever was the head of the North, Northwest Regional Health Authority when Christopher Phillip died on the Port of Spain General Hospital loan, he would have been fired if not charged. We need a better country and the only way to get a better country is to admit shit that is wrong and admit that we need people who could fix it and look up and look around and see. Listen, the election process, the political process, that whole campaign system is an interview. Interview us all. Check us on our track records. I have done more for the people of Diego Martin West than Keith Rowley has, and he's been in government for 31 years. And I've never been in government. But check us on our track records, what we were able to accomplish in life. Check us on what we know, what we see, and how, how we come across, how knowledgeable we come across, because anybody could tell you they could fix a problem. You know? But it's when they could tell you convincingly that you understand that even if you have to say, I don't like that man, but he's right, then you know you're on the right track. Trinidad Tobago, listen, 
all the love and all the accolades you're gonna have for me after I'll accept it then right now let's just be about a better Trinidad and Tobago put me and the progressive empowerment party in the parliament we will fix it unfortunately you will have to come to terms with facing the fact that some of your members of parliament and government ministers from the past are guilty of criminal wrongdoing and that we are going to bring them to justice and if you have no problem with that let me wish you and your family a safe Carnival 2019. I don't know what else to tell you if you're taking part in this. Tomorrow morning for Juve, walk with your galoshes and your raincoat because it looks like it's going to be a wet carnival. And um, just keep yourself aware. Keep yourself of what's going on around you. Take this as a closing song. Because pepper oil and bun. for I want to read something from the Constitution for you quickly this I know will bore you some of you don't like to hear when we get down into the actual nitty-gritty of what makes the country work and or how it should work but I need you to know and, and I like that people are constantly messaging me as to where they can get a copy of the Constitution of the Republic and I, I'm happy to always say just go to Google type in Constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago Mr. Stark Grimes has joined us good night Stark how come you're not out in the carnival a young man like you nice to have you on board thanks to Paul Daniel Nahus for sharing all of his safety tips for carnival pay attention to them because it is important 
chapter 7 of the Constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Chapter 7. I say this for a reason. Chapter 7 says, There shall be a Supreme Court of Judicature for Trinidad and Tobago consisting of a High Court of Justice, hereinafter after referred to as the High Court, and a Court of Appeal with such jurisdiction and powers as are conferred on those courts respectively by this Constitution or any other law. The judges of the High Court shall be the Chief Justice, who shall be ex officio a judge of that court, and such members of Pusine judges as may be prescribed. The High Court shall be a superior court of record, and, save as otherwise provided by Parliament, shall have all the powers of such a court, including all such powers as are vested in the Supreme Court of Trinidad and Tobago, immediately before the commencement of this Constitution. But it means that the people of Trinidad and Tobago withhold the authority. The Constitution serves the people and the judiciary and the Supreme Court are functions of the Supreme Law. And that is something that you need to note and we need to be very, very careful of not letting anybody distress us by, by remembering that the first and most important things of the, about the Constitution before before there is any Trinidad and Tobago, there is an agreement between the people. That agreement between the people is called the Constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. That document that signifies the agreement between us all speaks everything else into existence. The president, the prime minister, the courts, the police. The people of Trinidad and Tobago continue to hold all the power and if we could organize the people of Trinidad and Tobago to knowledge and to understand and to have an idea of what it is they want for themselves and their country, we would have a better country. The Constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago starts thusly, whereas the people of Trinidad and Tobago have affirmed that the nation of Trinidad and Tobago is founded upon principles that acknowledge the supremacy of God, faith in fundamental human rights and freedom the position of the family in a society of free men and free institutions, the dignity of the human person and the equal and inalienable rights with which all members of the human family are endowed by their creator. First line, first chapter, first paragraph. Whereas the people of Trinidad and Tobago respect the principles of social justice and therefore believe that the operation of the economic system should result in the material resources of the community being so distributed as to subserve the common good, that there should be adequate means of livelihood for all, that labor should be not exploited or forced by economic necessity to operate in inhumane conditions, but that there should be opportunity for advancement on the basis of recognition of merit, ability, and integrity. I tell people all the time, you don't need a manifesto you just need to understand the constitutional republic of Trinidad and Tobago your manifesto should be to make real to make reality all that is called for in the constitutional republic of Trinidad and Tobago because we do that we, we haven't no political party has ever approached the people of Trinidad and Tobago with an understanding to their needs and there are people who say that the things that I say about sharing the wealth in the country that is against capitalism but it is our supreme law this is what we say we gather together as a country for and if you don't like it hop a plane brother whereas the people of Trinidad and Tobago have asserted their belief in a democratic society in which all persons may to the extent of their capacity play some part in the institutions of the national life and thus develop and maintain due respect for lawfully constituted authority whereas the people of Trinidad and Tobago Recognize that men and institutions remain free only when freedom is founded upon respect for moral and spiritual values and the rule of law. We desire that their constitution should enshrine the above mentioned principles and beliefs and make provisions for ensuring the protection in Trinidad and Tobago of fundamental human rights. There is something called the rights enshrined which follows that and you should know the rights enshrined so that when people speak to you about what rights you have, know that it is hereby recognized and declared. This is part one, chapter one, the recognition and protection of fundamental human rights and freedoms. This precedes everything else. It is hereby recognized and declared that in Trinidad and Tobago they have existed and shall continue to exist without discrimination by race, origin, color, religion, or sex, the following fundamental human rights and freedoms, namely the right of the individual to life, liberty, security of the person, enjoyment of property, and the right 
right to not be deprived thereof except by due process of law. That means law is subservient to the people, law is subservient to the constitution, and the parliament should never be used to write law that contradicts the enshrined rights of the people, and they've done that, and there are laws and the books in this country that can't stand muster, they can't pass muster, and we need to repeal them. But we we'll talk about that another time. The right of the individual to equality before the law and the protection of the law. The right of the individual to respect for his private and family life. The right of the individual to equality of treatment from any public authority in the exercise of any functions. The right of a parent, the right to join political parties and to express political views. The right of a parent or guardian to provide a school of his choice for the education of his child or ward. Freedom of movement, freedom of conscience and religious belief and observance, freedom of thought and expression, freedom of association and assembly, and freedom of the press. Know these things. Remember these things. Stand on the Constitution and Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. The Progressive Empowerment Party tells you we intend to reboot the Republic. Our mission is to undo and redo, to take us back to where the wrong was done, to cancel that out and start it over. We promise a government based on jobs, home ownership, affordable living. Trinidad and Tobago needs to get itself to a place where we, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, understand our rights and stand on it. And the day we get together on that and forget the foolishness about race and gender and who pray into what and who lying with who, forget them things. Focus on our mission. When we get together for politics, we get together for one thing only, a better Trinidad and Tobago. And if you want that, the only option is the Progressive Empowerment Party. The Saturday right after Carnival, we have our, we're open for business, 19 Stanmore Avenue from noon. Come and join us. After Ash Wednesday, Ash Thursday, Ash Friday, come by us noon, Ash Saturday, and let's get down to business. We are having on the 10th of March our family day, we are having on the 23rd of March, 30th of March, our next pet market on the 23rd is the opening of the North Hub. We have a lot going on. And if you would like to be involved and help us with all of this, come and join us. We meet Saturday right after Carnival. And between now and then, please, 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 stay safe, Trinidad and Tobago.